All right, so our next episode, The Earth King. See, I can say that title. Um, if, boy, wasn't this a, uh, not only was this a, a fascinating one in terms of just how much can be hidden from a politician at the top, which, again, I don't find super shocking. Um, it's, it, it, especially, uh, may, maybe not person in charge, um, but a, a figure, I should say. You know, how much is kept away from a figurehead? Because honestly, when you think about how much a person who is supposed to know everything is supposed to know, there's no way anyone can get all this information. So a lot of times they have to just act like they know what they're talking about or smile. Or let me put it this way. They could know all this stuff if they gave up everything resembling a social life, you know, and anything that would keep them sane. So... It's understood, but at the same time, this is like the other extreme. This is just knowing nothing. And this king being very naive, but also very sort of hopeful and sort of wants to listen and is nice enough to not just totally disregard uh, everything and everyone. Uh, so you, you got the kids break in through this, again, Man, these action scenes. These action scenes floor me how good they are. Um, and, and this is just breaking into the palace, trying to talk to the king. This isn't even, like, one of the big, massive ones. I mean, it, if anything, they're apologizing when they hit the people, saying, sorry, we just got to see the king, but it's unbelievable, this animation. I cannot get over how consistently good the animation is and the planning of the action and the choreography. All of it just... Spectacular again, just unbelievable uh, to the animation team. Um, so they break in, they see this king, they 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 they're told if they're not enemies, drop their weapons. They drop their weapons and they get arrested, which is great. Um, but the king still says, "Let me listen to what they have to say and prove it." And I love that they make it very clear that Aang can. They have sort of these weird hand rock cuffs. There are literally hands that are cuffing them. Um, and they show very clearly that Aang can get out of them whatever he wants, but he'll still abide, you know. So I, I like that. I like whenever it shows, look, I could kill you right now, but um, here I'm trying to show more and more that I'm your friend. So they go through, they bring the king to the outer wall, and they show that the drill was there from that one battle, and that finally convinces him that a lot of stuff is kept from him and that they're at war. He doesn't even know they're at war. So the king agrees that he will do what he can for this war. He knows how important it is. And the guy who was second in command or whatever, he's now put in jail. And he seems to be out of commission, but then, of course, man, the Sokka and Aang, they have to do the kiss of death. They gotta say, I think everything's gonna be all right. And you know everything's not gonna be all right when somebody says everything's gonna be all right. So, before Sokka says that, we get this news that uh, 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 Suke and uh, two of her friends are have arrived at the Earth Kingdom. Well, just at the point when everyone's about to split up and go their way. And you know immediately, especially when Sokka says, well, yeah, it'll be great to see him when I get back. Why don't you see him before you go? Obviously, so they can build up that that's Azula and her two friends. I, as soon as I heard three, was it Kyoshi Warriors or whatever, uh, at the front door, I'm just like, no, don't open it! <laughs> but at least for a great cliffhanger. I'm almost shocked they didn't end, like, the season there. That would have been a good uh, uh, cliffhanger there. Uh, and, and you got other interesting stuff going on that you wouldn't think would go on. A few episodes before the end. Again, you would think they would save it for the end. Uh, and that's the group splitting up. Um, one of the more really touching scenes, by the way, it, I think they played a little bit for last, but it's really surprisingly touching, is when uh, the brother and sister are deciding who's going to go see the father. Because one can travel with Aang, and the other has to stay behind. And originally it's going to be Katara, because, you know, uh, her and Aang, you know, tend to be a little bit of an item. But then she says, no, you know what, Sokka, you're, I, I, for lack of a better term, you're closer to Dad. <laughs> or you want to see him more, so why don't you go? And he just, for a split second, he gets like this little tear, and he just goes, you are the best sister ever, ever. And it's, 
they just play it for a funny little laugh scene, but it's a very, again, it's a very genuine, heartfelt moment between siblings. I thought that that was very effective, even if it was very short. So, obviously, they, they got that going on. Uh, Toph uh, gets captured by the two, um, uh, the two earthbending people that are going after her. And uh, Azula breaks in with her two, uh, her two friends there, and obviously it's gonna turn uh, everything into chaos. So, yeah, I, I'm curious what they're gonna do because how many episodes are are left? Like two, yeah, two episodes left. So I'm curious what's gonna happen in this amount of time that's going to just totally screw everything over before the beginning of the next season because that's a lot of stuff to lay on. So, you know what it is? It's like the Red Wedding. It's like, hey, here's the probably one of the biggest moments, but it's going to come before the actual end. And, you know, and just leave you going, what the hell? Now I have to see the last episode or the last two episodes. So, uh, yeah, just a, a good episode, a good... Good in showing, too, that I think there's always this thought that the people high up are always, they're always evil and always not to be trusted and stuff. And a lot of times, I think it's more just they don't know, you know, so much is kept from them. Now, of course, with today's day and age uh, and technology, it's just everywhere. Information is everywhere, so you can get it. But again, who's saying this information? And when you are so high up, you have to ask yourself, how much do the people know, too, and how much do my group of people know? So I I like that. I like they didn't just play him up as a jerk. He was obviously very naive and not super bright and unbelievably sheltered, obviously, but he was not a jerk, and I like that they didn't just make him the evil leader or anything like that. I'm also curious if they're going to go more into why the second-in-command was trying to shelter him and not trying to get involved in the war. I mean, they're making it look like he's in cahoots with the Fire Nation. I'm wondering if they're going to go more into that. So, yeah, just, man, what a good cliffhanger. I mean, even though you see a comic, it's just like, oh, no, shit! So it's it's a real good cliffhanger, and I enjoyed that greatly. Um, can't think of too much else to say about this episode. Uh... And I, I like what Aang said, just as soon as we get Appa back, we're going to split up again. You know, we're going to uh, split everybody up. So I'm, I'm curious to see where this goes. It'd be, it'd be interesting if there's a season where just everyone is split and it has to go that way. Like maybe two people on one adventure, two people on another adventure, and two on another, something like that. And that's how it has to be. That'd be interesting. And it's all about trying to find their way to get back together. Uh, I, I don't know if that's the route they're going. It'd be an interesting route, but yeah, I'm definitely curious to see where the next one goes, because that, uh, that was a real good cliffhanger. So that's it. I'll see you in the next one.